Hello, Team Absolution fans, and welcome back to Card Fight Cash. It's me, Doombringer Griffin, and this week we have a super quick standard update for you right before we get into the almighty Bermuda season. The release date may have passed but, uh, by the time this comes out, but alas, um, we'd like to let you know on every other deck in the game at the moment. <laughs> so before we um, pay our dues to our Bermuda overlords, let's take a look at the latest and greatest price differences in the past two weeks. And we'll start with our good friend VBT01. Uh, the Dragonic Overlord OR, as well as the other Kagero cards, are still commanding rather high prices. Uh, the OR, as I mentioned, is now up to $38. Ermo is now 12 Berserk Dragon is now also $12. Uh, Bari is 8 And really, with that much Kagero value, if you're thinking of selling out, now is still the opportune moment. But if you're like me, want to play some super fun EBO6 and EBO7 Kagero, buying in looks dicey. If you happen to have an overhyped deck that isn't Kagero and you want to get into the new overhyped deck as Kagero, or just as hyped as it needs to be in my opinion, uh, then this might be a good time to trade in. But these cards are going to be high for a while, so... Strap in, party people. It's going to be a rough one for you if you're trying to play this deck. Our other heralds of value in this set, uh, namely the draw PGs, uh, Mist Mist is down a dollar to five fifty. Uh, Twin Blader losing a bit of hype as well, heading down to five eighty. Is Salt on her way up at six thirty seven? A uh, little bit lower supply has caused her price to increase just slightly. And a surprise visit, another double R, Riser Custom, now up to four dollars. Silent Tom finally pulling himself out of the mud from $4 to $5. Not a huge difference. Not hugely played still, but uh, definitely seeing some use. And honestly, if you open a VBT01 pack, there is not a bad chance you will get something valuable. So I wish you all luck on your pulls there. VBT02 has pretty much stabilized for the long haul. Um, nothing huge here. Um, the only card that's seen much of an increase as of late is PBD himself at 28. Uh, coming up from the mid-20s. Uh, buying into Shadows right now, ahead of their next set with Mordred Phantom in a few months. Uh, Maybe an okay idea, but wait till PBD himself drops down a little bit or start picking up the other cards that are will be needed. Uh, they're all much less expensive, and uh, Gus Blaster, as we'll discuss in VBT04, has actually had a slight dip, so now might be a good time to pick up everything except PBDs or to upgrade your old Shadow Paladin deck if you did not yet by Vilas Deleter. In VBT03, uh, Narukami cons consistently heading downhill. Uh, the SVR Detonix Drill is $20, and honestly, if you're looking to get a high rarity deck, this might be the one, considering how cheap it is. That and uh, Pale Moon, as we'll get to. Uh, Monarch Sanctuary Alfred the Great Wall himself, $20 as well. Uh, Detonix Drill VR, $17.40, hence why you should go high rarity. Extra $2.50 gets you the good, nice, shiny cards. Great Silver Wolf Garmore OR at $13. Uh, not exactly sure why this is popping up so much. Could be someone trying to swag out their decks. But, uh, you know, more power to them, I suppose. I don't foresee this card being particularly played for, for too long. Tetramagus up to $9.48. Um, OTT players clearly preparing for the, the next big push there. Uh, Magatsu Gale and a surprise buyout is uh, $10. So if you bought into Nubatama when we told you to, you congratulations, you have now made money <laughs> off of that card alone. And finally, uh, just to drive that point home, Shura Stealth Dragon Kujikiri Kongo is $2. So yes, a whole times two on that guy. Congratulations, you doubled your money if you invested in Kujikiri Kongos. Kujikiri Kongo. Just had to say it one more time. Next up is VBT04 and a quick... 10,000 foot look at the VRs here. Uh, Great Hole has fallen to 17. He consistently is heading down. Uh, we saw him maybe at a slightly lower price a couple or about a month ago, maybe, but still holding in the high teens down from the 25 he originally launched at. Uh, an overhyped price, to be sure. Gust Blaster, as I mentioned, is 1550 down from 1850. So, again, now is a good time to pick these up. You might be able to score a playset for 55 or 60. Zengeki SVR is 870. If you want to swag out your deck in small ways, uh, this might be a good opportunity. And speaking of sw swagging out your deck in small ways, um, end of stage VR is a dollar, a great investment, but the SVR is 559. And so this, this may be the cheapest SVR in the game. 
if you are invested in the future of Pale Moon, I recommend picking this card up. Of course, he also has a VDR, which is more expensive. So do keep that in mind, as uh, if you're looking for the super high rarity, there is another level to go up, and he is more expensive considering the rarity, but someone may yet buy your SVRs, so not a bad investment either. And now on to the extra boosters, uh, VEB01, uh, seeing some surprise upticks. Uh, the Seafried SVR is 32, uh, Spike's getting expensive again. Spike Bouncer is now looking like he is a $10 card. Gyro Slinger jumped up to $2 as well, so honestly, everything in here getting a little bit more expensive. Archbird, as we saw a few weeks ago, was $1, $1.52, now up to $3. Machining Hornet, as we mentioned before um, on this show, is now $7, so a great investment to those who listened. Megarex seeing a slight uptick from $5.50 to $7, but back to Mega Colony, Paralyzed Madonna, $4.50, and Machining Mantis, $13.30. Mega Colony is becoming an expensive deck very quickly. No doubt, you know, between the Premium Collection and the Revival Collection and you know its future support in the V-Series, these cards are quite old, potentially out of print forever if they weren't already. I'm almost certainly sure they were. This is now the time to sell your Mega Colony. If you're still holding onto that deck and you want to get rid of it, toss it right now. Or sit on your investment and have yourself some fun when the next uh, set of VRs comes out. Yeah, more power to you. Support is coming at some point. No idea when. In VEBO2, we've been seeing some great Aqua Spoilers recently, and if you were looking to swag out your deck, prepare for $32 SVR Maelstroms, as well as $18 regular Maelstroms. So nothing too out of the ordinary with those. However, Pashals are now up to $524, and Total Assaults are holding steady at $7. Uh, on the Grand Blue side of things, Romario has come up to 775. Gus Jin is now 244, and I'm sure he will continue to climb as we start seeing more spoilers like we saw Greed Shade just recently, and these cards are looking great. I'm excited for Cositis personally, as I'm a big fan of the old card. However, on the Deep Police side, things are getting cheaper. Uh, Diamond Ace is 168 down from 2. Not a huge difference in the market price or the current low, however. Uh, keep in mind that we have not seen very much of what Deep Police is really capable of quite yet in this set, and if this goes live before the next big Deep Police spoiler, we may see some price increases, so do be aware if you're looking into buying that deck. Uh, Diamond Ace is looking like a great investment at the moment. Moving on to our favorite, VEB03. Um, looks like most of the high rarity stuff is getting bought out. Um, Zerachiel ultra rare rare the blue one is up to $89 with one listing so most printings of the special ultra rare rares are now getting bought up if you have one of the better ones being the rainbow or the um, you know background color blue for Zerachio for example um, those are increasing in price fairly steadily so I recommend getting rid of those if you would like to uh, not quite as hype as when they were first released of course there's not much you can do about that but if you're looking to get rid of the deck and you have some of these in them, be aware of the price. Speaking of being aware of the price, with as much Neo Nectar trading as we've been seeing over the past few weeks, uh, Cecilia is now up to $31. So now, by far, the most expensive VR in this set, and for good reason, that deck is absurd. When put together with something like Garden Guide, it looks really nice and premium, and they don't even have a new support set in sight. That's just how good this deck can handle itself with only the changes in Force 2. So do be aware that this deck is on the prowl, and if you have been waiting to sell off your deck, now might be a great time. We talked about Pansy Musketeer Sylvia two weeks ago. Uh, it's seen a slight uptick from 7 to 750 And uh, just as a fun little note, Sagramore is now a $3 card, so a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, overlooked cards now bumping up in price. Not a huge difference if you've been investing in double R's. However, it's... Honestly, not a bad idea at this point, as we've seen some success stories, like with Machining Hornet. And now finally, with VEB04. Uh, Leopold holding at his tried-and-true $19.20 on the 19 side this time. Uh, Lost Legend OR has not let off any steam whatsoever. He's now $45, and Lost Legend Triple R is a, in a buyout situation, or just recovering from it at $20, so Gear Chronicle has gotten monumentally more expensive in the past few weeks. 
Uh, if you're looking buying into that deck, I recommend waiting until more copies become available. Wait till the buyer recovers, gets down to a, you know ten to fifteen dollar card that may be the best you can hope for at this point, and then work your way into the deck. It's looking difficult. And finally, with Hamske, all the excitement around him has earned himself an eight dollar price tag. Good for him. Good for Hamske. However, this is down from two weeks ago where he was 981 so while the hype has died down hamske is still looking like a card you should be getting rid of keep in mind he's on the downturn you may not get as much as you would have before however he still commands you know 30 bucks for a set 25 bucks for a set wouldn't be bad and it's better than you would have done before the excel 2 changes came out so with that, that's all the cards we'll be covering this week. Again, this was a short solo episode by me. If you have any suggestions for this show, any segments that you'd like us to do, we did used to go in more depth on things like trading or you know, how to balance trading and playing at a tournament. If you have any requests for you know other segments or other topics you'd like us to talk about, please feel free to put them in the comments. We'll read them, we'll respond to them, and you know we look forward to seeing you here next time. Next week is premium, so please join us then. This has been the Doombringer Griffin, signing off. Peace.